Hello and welcome to my world. <laughs> Today let's talk about habits and I want to start by asking you a question. What are your habits based on? Are they based on subconscious fears, wounds or patterns? Or are they based on your heart's desires and what you want to see in your life? And this question, I mean, the answer to this question is what it is. You don't need to judge yourself. This is just to raise awareness, okay? We all have habits that serve us and some that don't serve us, okay? So... You could say good habit or bad habit, but to me, good and bad is judgment, like it involves judgment. So I prefer taking the point of view of the observer and talking in terms of, is that serving my highest good or is that not? Is that doing me a disservice? How is this habit supporting me in my way to making my desires come true, for example? So subconscious fears, wounds or patterns that are not serving your highest good are, for example, patterns around self-sabotaging. You, you know you have an important meeting, but you're arriving late or you forget. This is subconscious self-sabotaging, for example. Procrastination is not productive, it's not serving you. Indecision, perfectionism, fear of failure, fear of success, and fear of not being able to maintain the success, more specifically. Or fear that once the success is obtained, it's not gonna last because of subconscious beliefs like success doesn't last or happiness doesn't last. Of course, it's not true at all because that's placing happiness outside of ourselves, making it depend on external event. So, of course, our external circumstances impact our level of happiness, of course, but we have the power to get back into balance. That's basically my point. And habits impact our energy and the energy behind our tasks. So if, for example, you do something for your business, you're working on your business because you have to do it, but you, you don't like doing this and you're feeling hopeless about it because you're not seeing results, the energy is going to be embedded in that action. The, the, en the energy that you're going to send out to the universe is the energy of... I have to do this, otherwise this is not going to happen. So this is fear-based. It's not like, oh, I'm doing this, I'm excited to do this, or I know I need to do this because it's going to bring me this, this and that. These habits are actually shaping who we are because the way we act actually reflects our internal environment as within, so without, right? There is nothing more beautiful during a session than seeing how my clients realize, bring to their awareness the limitations that they had been holding. I'm, I'm just going to refer to fears, wounds, and patterns as limitations, okay? Because we all have them. So when these things are brought into consciousness and you understand why this happened. You, you don't necessarily have to understand, don't get me wrong, you can still heal without uh, having the full understanding, but bringing to awareness everything that is necessary for your healing journey and how everything makes sense, the epiphany, the level of relief and peace and a renewed feeling of endless opportunities that arises is seriously priceless. This is something so beautiful. And that's what we do in a business recalibration session. We find the core program. We remove it from your subconscious mind. We remove it from your being, from your core. You are 100% conscious. You are aware all the time. You know, all the duration of the session, you are consciously aware. 
And uh, the shifts are very, very fast. When something is brought to your awareness, then the shifts are fast and the changes can materialize in your physical reality really fast. So you can check out my website on my work with me page, the business recalibration. And yeah, so let's dive into the 12 habits for success that I want to share with you today. Number one. Cultivating awareness and more specifically self-awareness. You cannot change something you're not aware of, right? So awareness and self-awareness is number one needed element to bring change to your consciousness. And then you can choose to do things differently. Number two, surround yourself with people who have a positive outlook on life and who support your goals. If you have your business or you're starting your business and people around you are not in the same mindset, they, they are not entrepreneurs themselves, so they don't know what it takes to be an entrepreneur. And it's normal. You, know, you cannot know what you don't know, right? Not blaming or judging here. Work on finding people who are just like you. And I promise you, this is a game changer, honestly. Number three, respond to life. Let go of impulsive reactions, emotional reactions, and observe. That's how you deactivate your triggers and that's how you heal emotionally. When you respond emotionally to something, you are creating more of that thing that is creating that impulsive reaction. Of course, I'm talking about things that are painful or making you angry, things that are not very high vibrational, right? Four, practicing non-judgment. So this goes hand in hand with responding to life. You know, not judging things as good or bad, because this is separation. Things are. So by saying that you don't like something and staying stuck in that, oh, I don't like that, is going to create more of that feeling. Number five, cultivating patience. So I get it. You know, you want to work on your desires, you want to create your reality, but you are impatient. Impatience is often fear-based, okay? So trust that the work that you're putting in is going to materialize and you're going to become successful concretely. And when I say successful here, I insist, whatever your definition of success is, you know, it's personal, it's unique to each of us, right? So I use success as a general term here. Seven, be mindful of what you spend your energy into. Meaning, if something is not really bringing you anything positive, don't do it. And if it's something that is non-negotiable, for example, if it's an obligation, do it. But balance, bring balance. You know, if you do something, if you do a chore, if you have something that is not fun, do something that makes you happy after to rebalance, you know? Take a break, go for a walk, have a nice tea, whatever makes you happy and brings your emotions, your thoughts back into a state of balance or positivity. Number eight. Well, money is energy, so be mindful how you spend money too. This is not about a fear-based way of dealing with money. You are free to spend money however you want, of course. But what I mean here is more, if you feel something is not super necessary in your life, ask yourself, will I still be happy to have this item in three months? Or is it just something that I want on the moment and it's just going to be sitting somewhere and I'm never going to use it? Ask yourself that. And even if the answer is yes, it's, you, it's totally useless, but it brings you happiness, go ahead. My point here is that your decisions need to be mindful so you can take responsibility for all of your actions. And then later, if you see that thing, you're like, oh, why did I buy that? Well, I remember I made the conscious choice. So I have my own back. I'm good. Number eight. That leads to what I was saying. Taking responsibility for your actions no matter what. No matter what you do. 
own your actions, not blaming it onto anyone else or on the universe or whatever. Being radically accepting of yourself for every decision that you make. This is really going to change your life and this is also going to set you up for success. Because if something doesn't go as you had planned, you're like, yeah, okay, I know I can deal with it. It Just the way that I did it didn't work, but I'm just going to figure it out. And in the same way, when you succeed, you will be like, oh, I took the responsibility to succeed. I deserve my success. Of course, you know that. But sometimes doubt creeps in, or false beliefs creep in. But when you are mindful and you take responsibility, it leaves very little room for doubt and beliefs that are non-invited guests. If you see what I mean. (laughs) Next one. Having a good sleep routine. Try not to stay on your phone too long before going to bed, or at all. Turn the Wi-Fi off to sleep. Don't procrastinate sleep, neither. Commit to going to bed at the time that is good for you. Next one, improving your time management. So, of course, for the sleep that we just saw, but also in general. So, this goes with procrastination, monitoring your screen time when you're scrolling on social media, for example. You know you have an appointment, but you're just scrolling and then you're just behind with your whole day. You didn't optimize your time. And then you feel bad about yourself. In the evening, you're like, oh, today I'm not very happy with myself because I was supposed to do this, this, this and that, but I didn't. So manage your time. You can learn to manage your time. Number 11, maybe 10 or 11. I lost count, sorry. (laughs) Cultivating a growth mindset. Not taking it personally and seeing everything as a teaching. What is this teaching me? How can I learn from that? How differently can I do things? I'm taking actions, not seeing results. What do I need to do to change that? So really questioning. Questioning everything from a place of growth. Next is committing to your success. You decide and then you commit because deciding once is not necessarily going to help you on the long term. So it's about deciding and committing and checking in with yourself during the day. Is this supporting my commitment to success? Am I betraying myself if I, if I do this instead of doing that? Once again, no right or wrong answer because you, you are not judging. You are in the non-judgment. You are just thinking in terms of Serving your highest good or not serving your highest good. And the last one is to find an accountability partner or work with a professional uh, like myself, for example, with the pocket coaching that I offer in the programs with my clients. This is going to help you keep yourself accountable. When you do something, when you commit to doing something, You have someone to check on you, not to bother you, not to be the police, to be like, hey, you didn't do that. No. Hi, how can I support you today? What is your goal? And then at the end of the day, you maybe you didn't manage to reach that goal. We analyze why together. Always with benevolence. Be respectful of what you're going through. You know, it needs to be done with benevolence, not from a place of gaslight, not from a place of judgment. It's more growth mindset. How can I change that? How can I make sure that tomorrow or by the end of the week I have reached that? So that's the 12 habits for success that I wanted to mention today. Of course, there are more, you know, meditation and all that, but those were the 12 that I wanted to talk about today because they can make a big difference on your life, in your life. So like I was saying, with the business recalibration session and also with the relationship recalibration, I offer pocket coaching. I love it. It's like unconditional, unlimited support to make the most of our sessions together. Because it's like tools. You have tools. The tools are not going to use themselves. You need to use the tools. So having someone to help you and accompany you during the day, every day, for minimum one month, 
or more if you choose to work with me for two months or in my six months life alchemy program the time outside of the sessions to me is as valuable as the session as a compliment because you live your daily life and you find real life circumstances for which you might need help to solidify your new habits, your newly found truth based on your newly found beliefs. Because when we shift mind programmings, we replace them with your truth. So this is very, very valuable. So thank you very much for listening. I'm inviting you to check out my website. You can find my blog. You can find the button to book your free clarity call. And of course, you can find my services. Feel free to book your clarity call or your session. I would always be happy to accompany you. Thank you once again for being here and feel free to share this with a friend who could use some of these habits in their life. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.